Hi everyone, Gary Nall back again talking about health and nutrition. We are completing our series today, a three-part series on allergies, a natural approach. Hope you've seen the first two. Even if you haven't, you're still going to learn a lot of information about conditions that you had never thought were due to allergies, but indeed they are. Depression, overweight, candida, no energy, all kinds of things. Most importantly, how to avoid them and how to get them out of your system. Join me now for Allergies, A Natural Approach. Many patients arrive at my doorstep in the middle of an acute allergy attack and want some immediate relief. Whereby the traditional medical system would give them a pharmaceutical, we have very, very good natural treatments. One of the highest, uh, let's say, priorities would be very high doses of vitamin C. And we might have to give vitamin C in a powder form which is buffered and for sure should not be corn-based. It can be tapioca or it can be sago palm-based. But we may go up to doses of 10,000 orally or even much higher. And this tends to be very, very supportive to reduce those specific immediate allergy symptoms such as running nose, itching, wheezing, many, many other uh, allergy symptoms. Next would be uh, quercetin. Quercetin is one of the group of bioflavonoids and for some reason uh, is very effective in reducing allergy symptoms. However, one must uh, be fairly, let's say, specific about going uh, high on the dose. Where quercetin of 750 milligrams a day or even 1,000 or even 1,250 would be a uh, effective dose for allergy uh, reduction. Additional nutrients that can really help asthma both as an ac acute attack and over the long run are use of calcium magnesium, particularly higher amounts of magnesium equal to the level of calcium. Vitamin B6 is also helpful in using evening primrose oil capsules even two or three two or three times a day, so six to eight capsules a day, can have a therapeutic effect at reducing asthma symptoms. When we look at allergies and asthma, we really want to be sure that we're getting all of the minerals that we need to support the immune system, along with all of the other nutrients. Many people have come to me after using the plant source colloidal minerals for maybe three weeks to three months and they say I only started using them because it just made good sense to use them. I didn't realize I wasn't going to have to take my asthma or my allergy medication anymore. It really does build the immune system and strengthen it so that you're able to tolerate the uh, substances in the environment, whatever it is that you used to be allergic to. Other important nutrients for uh, allergy patients include the antioxidants and um, pycnogenol is an important one for, for allergy patients to take. Uh, coenzyme Q10 is also very important for people with allergies. For example, when children enter middle school, many of them have repeated infections because of the increased exposures, and taking coenzyme Q10 regularly can stop this. Your choices of food should come from the earth as close to nature as possible. A uh, low gluten choice of grain is brown rice. Um, millet, quinoa, those kinds of grains, root vegetables like yams and sweet potatoes, turnips, carrots, cooked and raw, organic of course because we spoke about the chemical overload to the system and the constant bombardment of our bodies with drugs and uh, the pesticides so you have to choose organic. Um, for those of you that are vegetarians, your choice of protein should be tofu and beans. If you are a type O blood and you choose and feel better with some animal protein, it must be free range and in moderation. And the choices should be lean meats, fish, and total red meats are out of the question because there's much too much estrogen in the meats and formaldehyde. Mood swings and energy deficiency are some of the most common problems of allergy and toxicity in the body. When I see pa patients and have them go on a process of detoxification, getting rid of some of the bad habits, sugar, nicotine, and alcohol, and other substances they may use daily, and get on a cleaner diet, they start to see a difference in terms of a stability of energy, an enhancement of energy, 
and no more mood swings. And until they don't do that, oftentimes they can't even tell that they were actually going through mood swings, especially when they get off sugar as common and caffeine, that they actually get more stable, they have more consistent energy, and they sleep better as well. Their whole level of vitality and health changes. Most people, they have trouble with many, many food, and not just one or two food. So usually, everybody eats the same food every day. So I have to tell them, you cannot eat the same food every day. Every food is good if you don't eat all the time. Every food is uh, not good if you eat all the time. So we tell them uh, to eat a simple meal and rotate their uh, food. Okay, Victor's allergic to milk, wheat, tomatoes, and basically his problem is a lot of food allergies. And we learn to control that by rotating his foods like Dr. Chow says. I often see children who, who come to see me because their parents bring them in because they have recurrent what's called otitis media or ear infections. And often it's not really infections, it's fluid in the ear. There's been a number of research studies and in my practice also, I find that if I get these children off of cow's milk and onto some basic simple nutritional supplements, uh, vitamin C, probably in the 250 to 1,000 milligram amounts. Uh, if they're probably over seven or eight, they can take some quercetin. The only reason I say that is because we haven't really used it that much in younger children. And it's fairly non-toxic uh, bioflavonoid quercetin. And that has an antihistamine effect also. And also, uh, usually a little calcium and magnesium, which helps relax the body and just to support them from not getting uh, possibly enough calcium in their diets. In addition to the nutrients to rebalance the immune system, we have two very, very important anatomical areas. We have the thymus gland, which is located under the sternum in the upper chest and is a major part of the immune system. It is in charge of the T cells. T cells are short for thymus cells. The thymus is a commonly out of balance in every person with allergy, as it is out of balance in persons with lowered immune state. And we have marvelous thymus repairers, but they are in very, very small use in American medicine today. We have herbal thymus rebalances, especially astragalus, which is a, a Chinese herb. We have also echinacea, and we have many, many other herbs and herbal combinations which are very supportive to rebalance the imbalanced thymus that we find in the allergic state. We have beyond the herbal treatments, we have marvelous homeopathic sarcodes, which are part of homeopathic medicine and homeopathic science, which are very effective if used with intelligence and matching the proper sarcode to the individual person's thymus imbalance. When someone has a history of allergies, the first thing to consider is a constitutional homeopathic remedy which would be geared towards bringing the whole body into a balance so that the body doesn't respond so strongly to these allergic substances. Sometimes though the person's under a lot of stress or there's a lot of these allergies in the air or around in their environment and these symptoms come on anyway. That is the time that we use the acute homeopathic remedies. Uh, I went to the drugstore, they gave me, uh, I believe it was a 30X of a Calibicoricum and I tried that for about uh, two weeks. And by the time the bottle was finished, my allergies seemed to like, uh, have dissipated. Homeopathic remedies are minute dilutions of various natural substances. Some remedies are derived from plant sources, some from animals, some from mineral sources. These different remedies are obtained from their natural source and diluted down to a dosage that you can't even determine chemically. There's something that remains in the substance though, some energetic force that remains in the substance that when introduced into a body that's responding in that same way, there's a change in the energy level of the person and the person's vital force then responds by bringing their whole being more into balance. Today, if you mention the word detoxification, people understand that it means cleansing the body of many of the substances that have caused over a period of time our immune system to falter. It's not a matter of just eliminating something from our diet or our environment, but rather strengthening our immune system. But before we can strengthen the immune system, we have to rebuild it, and that requires detoxification. 
we have four different channels of elimination in the body that take poison or waste material from the inside of the body to the outside world. Number one is your skin. It's a very large organ of elimination. The second one is your lungs, and most people in this day and age you just don't breathe deeply enough. They might do it during exercise or exerting themselves, but just sitting around just doing deep breathing can do miraculous things for people. The third channel of elimination is your kidneys. And it seems to me from my experience working with 70,000 patients over the years that most people don't drink enough water and, it, and the quality of water is extremely important too. It is my contention that if people would really drink a good, good source of water, like a distilled water or reverse osmosis water, drinking approximately half of their body weight every day, if they do that on a regular basis, not drinking with their meals, don't drink with your meals, you'll find that you'll be able to have a, a great relief from all of these allergic responses. The fourth channel of elimination is the main one that we work with in our office in Detroit, Michigan, and that is the large bowel. And when a patient comes to see me and I see their outside of their body is very flabby and weak, and I know their intestines are very weak also. And from years of eating gooey, gummy, pasty, sticky, starchy, fried, mushy, wheat, milk, foods, fried foods, the intestine becomes weaker and weaker. It's just like people want to go to a health spa and work out and have a body beautiful, but we also have to have the internal body work out. And this is why, as I hope most of you have heard by now, that fiber is very important. And fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, whole grains are essential to get fiber to give the bowel something to exercise against. Because it is my firm contention that a great majority of, of from my personal experience of working with 70,000 patients, that a great majority of these allergies are coming from your large bowel. And there are simple things we can do to help that large bowel eliminate properly, to clean it out, so that the body doesn't have to be in a state of shock from allergies, which is literally what it's doing, having a state of shock. In addition, you get a buildup of abnormal types of bacteria or in excess levels, and these can uh, elicit a whole number of toxins, which can have effects not only in your gut, but also for your whole system and including the immune system. So we try to do a cleanse. We'll use herbs, different types of herbs, uh, cascara, sagrada uh, bark, uh, licorice root, ginger root, dandelion root for the liver, silymarin for the liver, um, as well as things like psyllium, bentonite. All these are various types of things that we have in certain types of formulas. Some very simple, some collection of herbs that I will frequently give a patient early on in their treatment to prepare them for what is to come next. A colonic irrigation is an administration of water via the rectum with a two-tube system which allows a gentle flow of water into the large bowel and at the same time it allows the waste to flow out. It's all contained, it is not a messy thing, it is not an uncomfortable situation and if you will find a good practitioner, someone who's well versed in this, and it can also educate you on proper nutrition and elements to help the body with its elimination processes, you will have fabulous results. You, there's no reason to continue suffering with these allergies if you want to take some charge in your life. So this large bowel needs to be exercised. So these colonic irrigations, from my experience, don't just eliminate the waste in this material that gets built up in the colon, it exercises it. There's a traditional therapy again supported by the published scientific literature, that if you take uh, uh, herbs that have a bitter taste to them, in particular dandelion has been a very traditional one. Also other people advocate the use of lemon, uh, even the whole lemon in a glass of, of water on a, on a daily basis. It stimulates the contraction and secretion of bile juice from the, from the gallbladder. Keep in mind that the bile, the gallbladder uh, is basically a emptying tank for the material coming from the liver and a lot of the detoxification must go through the gallbladder first so by stimulating the gallbladder you're accelerating the detoxification that is occurring in the liver. Minerals necessary to help the liver to detoxify are the trace uh, minerals such as magnesium, manganese, zinc, copper, selenium, and the enzymes are mainly digestive enzymes that help us to uh, digest our food better, but also to help us in the metabolism. And one of them is uh, protease, amylase, lipase, and cellulase, which are just the regular four enzymes that are used for our digestive system. And then herbs are many. 
it, it depends on whom to you go to, where to look for, but I, I particularly use uh, ginkgo biloba as uh, one of the, my main herbs that I use for children with hyperactivity to feed the brain. Uh, garlic, uh, uh, I'm using now a wonderful herb that is called cat's claw that uh, helps to detoxify mainly the bowel and also the liver. When you detoxify, I mean, that's got a, a, a really interesting, specific definition today. Uh, for example, liver detoxification. There are actually laboratory tests now that can measure different phases of detoxification. And very interestingly, uh, when you detoxify, you create free radicals, a whole bunch of them. And guess what? Nutrients are used up. Uh, phytochemicals are used up that function as antioxidants. If you don't constantly replenish them during a detoxification phase, it can actually create tissue damage, can damage you, can cause disease. So it's extremely important that the vitamin E, the mixed carotenoids, the vitamin C, the selenium. Uh, I love curcumin from turmeric, you know, excellent anti-inflammatory. I like the pycnogenols, which are like grapeseed pycnogenol, outstanding, powerful antioxidants. I like glutamine that I use to reverse a leaky gut, also increases liver glutathione levels. Glutathione uh, becomes an enzyme system that's probably the single most powerful antioxidant system in the human body. Juicing will give you the concentrated forms of phytonutrients, phytochemicals, minerals that are lacking in the diet, minerals that are lacking in an immune compromised state, and it will enhance the immune system much further than that. A regular exercise program is really important for keeping allergies uh, at a minimal level. The uh, ability to detoxify the body from regular exercise and sweating is really important. The detoxification process, in my mind, is probably one of the key therapies for helping people rid themselves of allergies rather than just treat their allergic symptoms. I found that allergies are really connected to a lot of the heavy metals, the toxins that are within the body. So whether it's through the water that the children are drinking or through the food that they're eating, and this creates a big problem towards a lot of allergies. Chelation therapy is, is an option for some people that have toxic heavy metals that have been stored within the lymph system, the circulatory system, the arterial walls, the organs, and detoxification through the diet sometimes is not enough when there is a heavy metal toxicity, so the choice of chelation therapy is an, is an option. It is when a patient comes into the office and a substance called EDTA is dripped into the vein over a slow four-hour period along with other nutrients like calcium, uh, magnesium. It acts as a clawing agent, attaches on to the heavy metals and carries it out through the kidneys. There are many new advances in both the treatment and research of allergens. One other aspect of correcting allergy problems would be to be tested for what's called a serial endpoint dilution. This is a method of medical science whereby intradermal antigens are injected on the arm usually, and we get a reactivity to antigens, and we dilute the antigen to a point where we get what's called a shutoff dose. This shutoff dose is then given to the patient as a treatment, which the patient can administer him or herself, which over a period of months will shut off the allergy symptomatology. This is part of contemporary allergy. It is not part of all allergy in America today. It is only practiced by a handful, maybe 10% of all allergists. Using um, the uh, inhalant Im immunotherapy or allergy shots that I use in my office, we spend more time testing. So not only do we find what they're allergic to, we find the precise dose that is their dose for treatment and therefore we can frequently start at a higher and yet safer and well-tolerated dose. And therefore, when we desensitize them and make them less allergic, we will see effects in about one to two months. Whereas in the more traditional types of immunotherapy, you start at such a low dose, it takes so long to build up that you might not see effects for six, 12, or even 18 months. 
Uh, food allergy research is uh, 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 just a red hot area of investigation throughout the world and I'm constantly surprised, uh, maybe even pleased, uh, to, to uh, frequently come across new uh, 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 views of disease entities that you wouldn't think would be remotely associated with food allergy. For example, insulin dependent diabetes is now being seriously discussed and researched in and peer-reviewed international journals. A lot of researchers are uh, suspecting that the early exposure, premature exposure to whole food before the age of four to six months in genetically predisposed babies, babies who are predisposed to developing uh, insulin-dependent diabetes, uh, that this early exposure can actually provoke the beginning of the disease process that will six, seven, eight years later result in insulin-dependent diabetes. Uh, and if we're talking about in the United States uh, a million or two uh, kids and that the majority of them could actually prevent the occurrence of insulin dependent diabetes by avoiding foods at an early age, that's a remarkable breakthrough. Uh, one other one that comes to mind immediately is epilepsy. Uh, it was observed back in the 1920s that when people fasted their seizures got better, often disappeared, and then they ignored it for about 70 years. Within the last five or ten years, there's been studies, in particular Dr. Egger out of uh, London Medical School in England has done a study involving epileptic kids, and he found, this is really interesting, that the, the, the children who had seizures, epileptic seizures of all different kinds, who also had migraine headaches at the same time, about 75 to 80 percent of those kids could actually have a dramatic improvement, including complete cessation of epileptic seizures by eliminating allergic foods from their diet, even to the point that 19 of the kids that were studied could completely get off medication, where before the medication was barely controlling the seizures. That's extraordinarily exciting. In terms of some of my more complex allergy patients, I have been using a treatment that comes from Europe, and I've been using it for about six years now. It was developed in Europe, in England, by Dr. Len McEwen and this was after about 30 years of research. And it's an ingenious technique. It's called EPD, or enzyme potentiated desensitization. And what it consists of is using very small amounts of antigens, whether they be food, inhalants, chemicals, even some type of bacteria, coupled with an enzyme, which is really a ubiquitous enzyme in all our cells called beta-glucuronidase. Beta-glucuronidase acts somewhat like a lymphokine, which potentiates the immune system response to these very low and very safe doses of these antigens. What I love about EPD is that you don't have to uh, give one here and one there. The antigen mixtures are very inclusive. So when you give the food mix, it covers the whole range of foods because it includes all the families of foods. When you give the inhalants, it's the same way, and chemicals is the same way. And I've found over the years, dealing with allergies since I've been in practice now for 14 years, that uh, inhalants were always easy, but foods and chemicals were more difficult to deal with with various types of what we call immunotherapy or allergy treatments. And the EPD has been a real advance in terms of patients with multiple allergies. Uh, one of the conditions that surprised me uh, that responded dramatically to food allergy in about three out of every four cases was uh, uh, inflammatory joint condition called rheumatoid arthritis. I had one patient uh, who came to see me. His name was Bill, uh, uh, who had suffered with rheumatoid arthritis for five years. Uh, the year and a half prior to coming in, he had been in and out of the hospital, had spent something like $115,000. And either the first or second visit that he came to my office, he emptied a brown bag filled with over 100 empty prescription bottles that he, uh, involving prescription drugs that he had used in the attempt to bring this extremely disabling pain and swelling and stiffness under control. He had suffered from complications, GI bleeding, cataracts, all kinds of complications as a, as a, a consequence of this approach. Uh, he was a skeptic, didn't believe what I uh, was advocating. His wife happened to have uh, some knowledge in nutrition, so he gave it a try. Without adding medication, in fact, by decreasing medication, 
uh, anti-inflammatory medication. Within the first three to four weeks, he was pain-free, where before he was in so much pain that he couldn't even put a sheet over his body to sleep at night because the pain was so severe. He was pain-free within the first three to four weeks of the therapy, and within three months, I had the opportunity, maybe the honor, to actually see him get up and take the first step out of the wheelchair that he had taken in 18 months prior to coming into the practice. Now, what did we do? We primarily uh, approached his condition as a nutritional food allergic disease. And by focusing on just improving his overall nutrition, rotating his diet with a wide variety of organic foods, and getting rid of allergic foods from his diet, he was able to heal uh, within a period of three months from a, a chronic disabling condition called rheumatoid arthritis. Everyone has to sit back and look at their medicine cabinet and say, do I really need all these medicines? Did the doctor tell me what's really wrong with me? And did I ask, why do I need the medicine? Why is my blood pressure elevated? Why is my nose stuffy? Why do I have asthma? Why do I have arthritis? The answer isn't a better, more sophisticated drug. The answer is to find out what's causing the problem and get rid of the cause. I really believe with all my heart that you can make changes in your life, learn things. Knowledge is power. And with understanding, you can, under, you can then increase your faith to do something in your life. But without knowledge, how are you going to understand everything? Become informed. Don't expect your medical doctor to be an educator or a teacher for you. Go out and do these things yourself. Do some research. Talk to other physicians. Talk to naturopathic physicians. Talk to chiropractors. Talk to people who are well-versed in nutrition so that you can get input and then make an intelligent decision yourself. I have found that it's opened up a world for me and now I'm interested in a lot of things because I've had such a positive experience with this. I like the momentum so I'm experimenting with other things as I said exercise and aromatherapy and massage and it's all having a positive benefit and I think it, it just started with just changing my diet. There we have it, another wrap. Hope you've enjoyed it and most importantly you can apply the information that you learn from this program each week in enhancing your well-being. I'll be back next week taking you on another journey in the exploration of ultimate health. I'm Gary Knoll. Until then, stay healthy and stay well.